the mouse of our thoughts on episode 1, season 2 of Behind the Attraction. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Lord Hepicals, and welcome to today's show. So here we are again. We're back with a brand new season of Behind the Attraction. Yeah, a lot <laughs> oh, If you've watched any of the episodes we did on season 1, you'll, you'll know that I didn't really find this show as favourable as I was hoping. Because obviously a series going behind some of our well-loved Disney park attractions. Yeah, should be right up my street. But the execution, not so good. Um, but yeah, so I'm very surprised that A, we're back for a second series. And B, it's quite short. So in the first season, we were given 10 episodes. And uh, in the second season, which we're about to start covering over the next couple of shows, we've only been given six. And I don't think they thought it through what they were going to give you for content. Um, particularly to get later on into the series. Um, but hey ho. So yeah, so today we're going to be uh, doing episode one, which of course looked on Pirates of the Caribbean, which of course has now become a real sort of you know, chicken and egg ride, you know, what came first, the chicken or the egg. So before we start, let me just make something very, very, very clear to all you youngsters watching, all right? All you youngsters out there, let me, just, let me make something very, very clear. The ride came before the films, okay? Let me make that very, very clear. Pirates of the Caribbean, the ride came before Pirates of the Caribbean, the film series. All right, let's get that in our head now, because I do not want to see the comments. You know, people going like that, oh, did the films come first? Or, and what, that's it, like, nope, not with any of that, we're gonna shut that down right now, no. The ride came before the films, okay? Sadly though, I am now in, I'm, I am in that generation of who remembers this ride being around before the films. Okay. Um, even though my first trip didn't happen until well after the films, films, uh, for, for film series was established um, in 2005, I do remember being around obviously before the films came out. So yeah. Um, so sadly, I'm going to be I'm in this generation who, when they get into their late 50s, early 60s, have to remind the youngsters that actually no. The ride came first, not the film. Still so not looking forward to that in my face of life, but uh, here we go. Hey, hopes. Yeah, so let's get out of the way now. The ride came first. The ride came first. Now, I kind of felt this episode was really, really lagging. We got about, we got 50 mins this episode, this first episode. Um, and of course, that's a give or take, given, of course, how Disney Plus likes to factor its lengthy credits into their uh, shows. Um, I really hate that about Disney Plus, but they have these big long credits and they factor that into the runtime. So not helpful. It's a bit, just, yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I kind of thought this, this episode was really, really lagging. You know, like I didn't need to know about the bit, you know, the bits you know, of pirate stories of old. I didn't need to hear any mentions of the film, because remember, Ride came first. Look at me, I'm banging on my desk to emphasize it. Ride came first! Didn't need to, we didn't need to see any footage from the films, that's not relevant. Except for Shanghai's. Shanghai's it is relevant. The rest of us, eh, eh, not relevant. Okay, so I did not need to see footage from the films in there. I did not. I really didn't need to see that. Um, yeah, so I kind of felt this was really, really, this episode was really, really lagging. Now, sure, hearing about some of those pirates as well will fascinate you pirate lovers, but people like me, not really keen on that. It's like, can we just get to the ride, please? Can we just focus on that? Because Pirates of the Caribbean is a really fascinating ride. And I think it's the best example of what Walt Disney said when Disneyland will never be complete. Because, you know, Disneyland is always changing. It's always it's always being improved across all six resorts. You know, whether it's Anaheim or Paris. You know, it's always constantly changing. Um... I think this is the best example of that because this ride has had to really change uh, with the times. Because we learned the episode that actually this ride actually used to be sexist. <gasps> you can leave that. Um, 
But yeah, so I, I thought so I thought it was really interesting how this ride had to really change for the times. So just like um, a lot of things, it was really fascinating. Uh, but I felt the focus needed to be more on the ride. We didn't really hear that much from, you know. I mean, obviously we learned how learn the fascination how they made it in Disney's land. And we had to literally go. What was it the burn they remember from everything? I can't remember it now. I think it's like, but they were talking about how you have to go beyond the berm. I'm sure other people who will know what that means. I th I remember. I knew they thought about that. I forgot it already. But it's like that was a bit of a weird word. But I'm surprised I remember that. Um. So yeah, it was quite fascinating to learn how so they made this attraction work within the parameters. So you didn't. So, so apparently, for you on the square, which was going to be in Disneyland, it didn't fit. So they had to put it outside the parameters of the park, but they did really by making you think you're still in the parameters of the park. That's quite fascinating. Um, but yeah, but I felt they needed to divert devoted time to each version because every version is different. I mean, in Paris, for example, um, we obviously you know have have the animatronics speaking French as well as English, but also we have managed to. Um, now I know they're coming in the episode, but it didn't. But it was kind of like a brief flash of the pan. We in Paris have a scene where you have actual sword fighting. So you actually get the animatronics able to have a sword fight. And you think back in the days when this, this, this track was, was first opening, well, in kind of the late 60s, that would be very hard to do. You, you'd be lucky to get them even talk, moving their mouths, you know, like, like doing that. Um, and then obviously you, pack, you go 30 years later in Paris where you get to do something that... Anaheim probably couldn't, couldn't do. Um, they did briefly cover that, but it was kind of just like a flash of the pan. The first two episodes of this season, second season had rides that really got interesting Paris versions, but it just got skinned over. I'll talk more about that in the next episode as well, because uh, back again in more detail about that. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, so obviously if you go to Paris, you go down there for a version of Heights Cabin. Look out for the sword fighting. Look out for that. Um, yeah. <sighs> yeah. I just felt. Uh, could have could just. Because just, oh, you could have taken the time to, to focus a bit more about each version. Because in each version that it's in, the diff. The, uh, uh, so it's in Anaheim, Florida, Paris, and Shanghai. So only in four. So only in four of the six parks. Each version is completely different, and I felt they could need to have spent time on that on each one, rather than just dragging the time up. We're, we're talking about now, oh, pirate stories of old, or God forbid, bringing up the films. I felt that like that's time being wasted. Where we could devote, we could focus on no more about these, these versions, particularly with Shanghai. Now the last kind of 20, 15 minutes were the bear to Shanghai, but I felt Shanghai's version could do with like its own full blown episode because it, it got touched on in the Imagineering story. They touched on that. Uh, it was in the episode when they were talking about some of the, um, uh, the other parks, um, it's like the Shanghai, Hong Kong parks. I was really fascinated in that, in that episode of Imagine the Story to learn about that and how Shanghai's was completely different um, to all the others. Shanghai did something completely different and unique for Shanghai, which is absolutely amazing. Um, and they talk about with Shanghai, like how there's going to be this whole new this whole land and everything. Did they actually do that? Did they actually make it like a whole land based on pirates? So I put that up. Um, so give me two seconds. Because uh, I thought, because when they said it, said it in the um, episode, they're going to do a whole lot. I was like, did they? Did they do a whole lot on Shang for Shanghai on Pirates? So. You give me two seconds, I'm going to look up um, that up. Okay, so give me two seconds. And then we'll come back. Um, 
there because I didn't remember the Mansion Historia suit as an actual land, just the ride. So let's have a look. Let's go park layout. Ah, so Treasure Cove. So it's not really a Pirates of the Caribbean land, but it's kind of feeding to that kind of genre. So the um, so your harbors, um, the oceans, and the um, you know the 18th century, just about that kind of thing. But yeah, so it's Treasure Cove. So it wasn't a pirate. So it's not a Pirates of the Caribbean land. It's in, but it's but the um, history that it's based on. That's what it's the, 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 now. Shanghai's got a really fascinating uh, version of the Pirates of the Caribbean because Shanghai's version is actually a different ride altogether. It's called uh, Pirates of the Caribbean Battle for the Sunken Treasure, and it's really, really nothing like anything you've seen before. So, Shanghai's got its own unique version. Of Pirates of the Caribbean. It's so now I think Imagine Story did a better job at, of covering this than the, this episode of Behind Attraction did. Um, so go watch it back in Imagine Story. I can't remember which episode it is. It is. Um, yeah, it's um because this version of Shanghai is so immersive. It's so technologically advanced. Uh, but of course it also does pay homage to the Pirates of the Caribbean. Like you got Jack Sparrow, Barbosa, and Vicky Jones in it as well. So this one. So Shanghai's up out of the mall, you can uh, is the only one where the egg came first, because for the because for the Pirates of the Caribbean all the, all the other parks it is ride came fir first, ride came first for the films, but with Shanghai's because Shanghai's was not a right we'll just do a do a version of it and maybe do a couple of little tweaks to make it seem different you know it's the same thing no it was Shanghai. They did a completely different ride. So Shanghai, you're not doing any favours to help with the whole chicken and egg situation, okay? Ride came first. Let's remember that. Um, yeah. But because Shanghai incorporates elements from the film, you could argue, well, the film came, the films came before Shanghai's. That's the only time I'm going to allow it, okay? If you want to talk Shanghai, yes, films came first. The others, no. No, no, no. 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 Eh, eh. Yeah, but, it's, but the, the various different visual effects that are used in this ride is so just nothing compared to what we've seen before in, a, in other uh, theme parks with their bird parts. It's just so epic. No, you you feel like you're, you you've got you've been you're, you you get a completely different experience than we got with the others. Um, I wonder if it's more. I wonder if this is more action packed because I did Pirates of the Caribbean in California. Um, you know, because I, I actually struggle to find things to do in the main park in California. Typical. It's always it's always the second gate in this resort that I seem to be more fascinated with and find more things to do. It's always the second gate. The main park, not so much. Um, yeah, so I did the uh, Pirates of in California, and I just thought this was absolutely a drag. It was just going really, really, really slow. And of course, you have to hear the song you hate. Oh, bro, it's like, yeah. <laughs> It's like, can somebody chip a rocket up their asses? This is, this is so dreary. It's so, so, it's like, can someone just chip just, just a rocket up their ass? Maybe that's something Hong Kong and Tokyo could do when they, they get one. Just chip a rocket up the pirate's asses. Go, vroom, and then they go, vroom. I just have them shoot up, up in the air. That'd be quite hilarious. Um, you know, as if they're jumping off the plank. <laughs> Yeah, but I found it in uh, Disney, uh, in Disney, and I found that really, really drugging. So I wonder if Shanghai is more action-packed, more fast-paced. Uh, anybody who's done that, let me know. 
Um, yeah. But I felt with Shanghai's version, you could have developed a whole episode on that. Not the last kind of 15 mins on it, where really you just, like, just, just skimmed through. Um, because Shanghai's, it is unique compared to all the others. Um, and everything. So, yeah. Um, and Shanghai's, I thought he's, he's a really, really good, good, brilliant. Um, Imagining Story did it a bit better. Uh, should I try and find out which episode that is? Just in case you can, just see, if you haven't seen Imagining Story yet, you can check it out. Um, yeah. So, again, the problems that I have with the first season about timings and, you know, content, you know, already straight right there. Because it just felt like the first 20 minutes we weren't talking about the ride. We just were not. Um, which is, I just, just feel, I need, just come on, could we just get to, um, could we just get to actually talk about the actual ride, what we're here for? You know, um, yeah. Okay, I think it's episode five of the of the Magic News Story, which is, which is a carousel of progress. Um, in that episode, they do talk about Shanghai Disneyland, so I think it is gonna be it is episode five. Um, or it might be episode six. If to be beyond, which also talks about the groundbreaks of it. So, it's episode, have been, so watch episode five first, and then maybe if it's not in that episode six, those last two, just those last two, cover Shanghai. Okay, so go watch those in particular. Obviously, if you've not seen all the other spurs, go watch them first, then get to that. Okay, if that means you've already watched it, you can just skip to that episode. Okay, so yeah, so all in all, I just felt this episode was really, really lagging. It just dragged, dragged, dragged. The first. I mean, I know you had 50 minutes to play with, but you need to just make the most of that content. Don't spend the first 20, 25 minutes talking about, you know, different pirate stories and all that, you know. Just get straight to the purpose of the show, which is what we're here for, to talk about the ride. And also, I didn't need to see any little snippets from the films either. It's like, no, you're not helping the situation of people... Of what came first. We know what came worst. So at first. We know what came first. It was the fucking ride. I'm, I'm even swearing now to put the emphasis in. Okay. It was the ride that came first. Unless it's Shanghai. Oh Shanghai. You've got a lovely ride. But you're not helping. The chicken and egg situation with fire cells here. Okay. Bloody hell. Um. Yeah so. If any hopes of me thinking they will have learnt the lessons of what went wrong the first season, no. No, 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 no. No, it's just as bad as I remember the last time. And it's a shame because this kind of show should really fascinate me, you know. Getting to learn about, you know, what we're into making these beloved attractions. But the execution's just not right. It just really is not right. Um, yeah. So it's a real shame because obviously Pirates Club is an amazing ride, ride for, for a lot of people. It's really, it's got a really great backstory to it, but you just focus too much on the source material and not focus on the right stuff. And also, did we need to see snippets from the films? No, no, we did not. We did not. Okay. And reminder before we go, Pirates of the Caribbean the ride came before Pirates of the Caribbean the film. Okay, okay, good. Right, thank you for your attention. Don't forget to click like button, and subscribe, and when you click the subscribe button. I was like, you know, something wake up and I'm to the plus the mouse. You can reverse the comment on my Facebook YouTube channel, and that's what it says.